What is up people? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. So for today, I'm going to explain why every single mobile DJ on this planet Earth should be using an external mixer. Now before I start, I think it's important that I tell you what kind of external mixer I use, just for context, because I'm gonna be using that as like an example throughout this. I know my external mixer very well. I don't know about every other external mixer, so maybe like some of the things I'm talking about, some external mixers can't do, I don't know. But just for reference, the external mixer I use is the RCF F10XR. She's pretty, huh? Ain't she cute? Swing, swing. 250 bucks. And that's another thing. External mixers are generally inexpensive. I'm not the type of YouTuber that is gonna tell you and blow your mind about everything I'm about to talk about right now and then say, oh, but by the way, it's a couple grand and uh, you're a loser if you don't get one. Like, no, like this is a very inexpensive thing that will literally change your game. Now I know what you're thinking, Nick, why would I need an external mixer? My controller has the outs to the speakers, it's got a mic input, or maybe, maybe you got that bomb controller that has two mic inputs. Mic, input. mic one, mic two, you got them in there, you're good to go, right? Why would you need an external mixer? It's all in one, it's built into what you got, right? Buckle up. Buckle up, I'm about to change your life. So the first reason why every DJ should be using an external mixer is sound. Yes, sound. If you use an external mixer, you will sound 10 times as good. It is unbelievable how much better you sound and how much more headroom you have on top of it. No matter what kind of speakers you have, what kind of microphone you're using, you're gonna get the absolute best out of your products by using an external mixer. This is why the large majority of the digital mixers, controllers, your S9, your Pioneer products, your, whatever you're using, it doesn't matter if it's top of the line or in between, any of the digital stuff, the large majority of it, and when I say large majority, I'm saying like 99% of it, they have cheap preamps, cheap sound cards, cheap processing built into it. Now I'm not hating on it, okay? Because it's just, they have to be able to make the product cheap enough to sell, right? And stay competitive in the market. And at the end of the day, they're kind of expecting their products to either be based in a club, right? Where a club will have a professional system with a professional external mixer and processing and all that stuff, right? Or they're expecting you to run an external mixer like I'm about to tell you all about. They don't really spend the extra money Money on having all these expensive preamps and like high-end sound cards because it's just really not worth it. Otherwise, it's gonna double the price of all their products and you're not gonna buy their stuff. Now, just so you know, a preamp is essentially the thing that processes the signal to make it sound good to go out to the speakers, right? When you speak into a mic, it goes through the mixer and it goes through the preamp, it processes your voice, your sound, and it makes it where it can be amplified into speakers. Now, the problem with having having a cheap preamp is that you can't really turn it up that loud without getting feedback or without starting to distort. You ever notice that? I mean, this is a big problem I had with my S9 mixers. I own two. I love S9s. I think they're the best mixers ever, right? But I had a huge problem with that. If I hooked up a mic direct to my S9 and I tried to use it, I'm, I have a loud voice if you couldn't tell. <laughs> I'm pretty loud, right? When I'm on the mic, it's the same way. I project my voice. Ladies and gentlemen, let's see. Like, that's how I speak on the mic. I'm just loud. That's how I am. Well, when I went through my S9 and I'd have a mic direct through, I, I couldn't get enough volume. And then when I would turn it up, it would distort. I would literally sound like shit on the mic and I couldn't figure out why. I bought an attenuator, right? If you don't know what an attenuator is, you can plug it in. It's like an XLR back and front. You put, you plug it in through it and it lowers the signal by a, a amount of decibels. And that helps a little bit, but you just, you still don't sound good. You don't have full control. But running your mics through a dedicated external mixer will give you a ton more options so you can properly ring out the mic and prevent all the feedback. But also, you're gonna have legit preamps. It's gonna go through with a legit preamp. So it's gonna sound good and you're gonna be able to have way more volume. The cool thing about the mixer I use is it has high pass filter buttons on my microphone channel. So essentially, I push in the button and it eliminates any sounds below 80 hertz, which really prevents a lot of feedback. You ever notice that with 
your controller or your S9 or your Rain or whatever you're using, you're kind of redlining at your parties. Like when it comes to really turning up, you're still got a red line because your crowd's big and it's just not loud enough, right? So you're just going into the red. And when you go into the red, you're distorting. Red's not turbo, okay? You're distorting. Well, you don't have to go to the red. Essentially, you're gonna set your main controller or mixer to zero, right? So right to like green or like the first yellow. And then you use your external mixer for the extra headroom. That's where you're gonna get all the extra sound. So you can straight up send a clean signal to your external mixer and let your external mixer turn it up. You're gonna get the most out of your speakers, it's gonna be the clearest sound you ever heard, and you're gonna be able to turn it up way louder than normal without distorting, without redlining, and without any issues. So you're gonna get more out of your speakers. Think about your DJ setup like a band. Your controller is an instrument. Your microphone is an instrument, right? How do bands hook up? You got the guitarist, you got the drummer, you got the bassist, you got the vocalist, you got anything else they play. They all hook up to a mixer and that mixer is controlled by someone and leveled out so they all sound nice and even. That's the same reason why you would wanna do that for your DJ setup. You go to a concert, you always see one dude in the middle with a huge soundboard and he's adjusting all the sounds and make sure everything's even and nice and he has full flexibility and control to like prevent feedback and make this sound a certain way and this sound a certain way way it's the same thing your controller is an instrument you want to have your controller on a channel and you have full flexibility on that channel with your controller you want to have each mic on a channel full flexibility with each mic and anything else you decide to add. These are all instruments, like look at it that way. Having the full control and utilizing the high-end preamps and sound cards with these external mixers will greatly improve your sound, bring you more headroom, and allows you to be louder, but in a way where it fills the room, so you truly sound fantastic. Now to me, just having better sound, more headroom, and sounding clearer and better all the way around is well worth getting an external mixer and running it through. But there's more, people! The second thing that's awesome about having an external mixer is the flexibility with it. You need one, two, three, four mics, you got it. My mixer is 10 channels. 10 channels. So I run two microphones and then I leave my other channels open to whatever I need them for. If I happen to need a third or fourth microphone, I usually know ahead of time and I bring it and bam, put those on a channel. If I have a live musician that's gonna work with me, let's say a violinist or a saxophonist or a little drummer that has mics or whatever. If your bride's little brother wants to strum his guitar and play a little song during dinner, no problem. I got a mic for him, I got an input for his guitar, Good to go, I can do a sound check, make sure everything's perfect, he's gonna sound great. Anything that gets thrown at me at a wedding or any of my events, I can handle because I have 10 dedicated channels. If I wanna run a third speaker in another room, let's say it's like a weird shaped room, right? And you're like in here on the dance floor but the people are eating like in the separate room, you ever been to a venue like that, right? I run an external speaker off one channel. And not only that, I have full control on that speaker with that channel. I can decide whether or not I wanna put my microphone through it. I can make my microphone less loud through that speaker with my mixer. So I can basically turn my mic down there but it'll still be just as loud on my main setup. I'm, I have individual control over that speaker with that one channel. So it's clutch if the speaker happens to be in front of a table cause like I ran it in the dining room or whatever, no problem, I can turn the mic down, I can make the music a little louder than the mic so it doesn't pierce anybody's ear with my voice, whatever. Like the flexibility's there. Same thing with a booth, right? You have a dedicated booth out on the external mixer, but you can take the microphone out of it. Something you can't do within a controller. With most controllers I know, I'm sure someone's gonna comment, oh, I got this one controller that does it. That's great, but regardless, most controllers or S9 or whatever you use, don't do that. I can literally have my booth speaker on the ground, right, so I can hear myself, but I can make it where my microphones don't go through it at all, so it prevents the feedback, because again, you're, you're talking right next to the speaker, you know, you could point the mic and it feeds back and, uh, and it clears your dance floor and you know, that stuff, right? It prevents all that stuff. It's so cool to have that flexibility. But wait, there's more. What about the videographer, right? What about the videographer? They're always trying to hook into your shit, trying to get your sound. They always go for your speaker first, right? Oh, hey, can I just, uh, you know, hook this into your speaker? No! No! You're not hooking that into my speaker. Why? So you take it out later on while the speaker is actually processing a signal and then I hear a huge pop and it's bad for my speaker, bad for my audience, bad for me. Yeah, no. Nah. I'm not doing that, right? And then you got, all right, well, maybe the RCA through the master output of the controller, right? A lot of us do that and it works, but you're still mid-mixing and then he's trying to take his shit back and it's scary. It's scary. What if they pull out the wrong cord? Hmm? What if they pull out the wrong cord and the whole show? Think about that. 
It's scary stuff. I know you've had these fears. I know that's why a lot of us don't like videographers because it's like, oh, they have to get the sound. It's a pain in the ass. And then it worries me when I'm mixing and they have to leave early and all that stuff. Well, worry no more, DJs. You don't got to worry anymore. All these external mixers have external outputs where you can literally have them plug direct in. There's multiple ways you can do it. With my RCF mixer in particular, I use the aux output and it has its own dedicated volume. So when they plug in and they want to test it out with their little headphones like they always do, I always ask them, how does it sound? You got a good signal. Do you need it louder? And I can adjust the volume of that output to that one little recorder that they use individually without messing up any of my other sound, which guarantees them a perfect, clear signal for their video. At the end of the day, the videos for the couple, you want to give them a good signal. And honestly, if you give them a great signal, you're flexible and you're able to accommodate them really easily and better than most DJs, you're more likely to get recommended by them. You're helping out the couple because that helps their video. They like you, you like them. It's just a beautiful, happy, sunshine, rainbow type of situation. That's the kind of situation you want. And I understand that, you know, some people might give these videographers some you know, attitude or whatever, because it's tough, because it's a pain in the ass giving them sound. But that's the great part about having an external mixer. It makes it all easy and seamless. You're giving them the best possible product and you're also preventing anything from messing up. And if all that wasn't enough, the last reason why having an external mixer is so clutch is you can use it to live stream. A lot of us are live streaming nowadays, and if you wanna have direct audio that's crystal clear for your Twitch audience, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. This is how, this is how, this is how you do it. This is how we do it. Essentially, how I run my live sound is I have my main turntable set up, then I have my external mixer, my RCF F10XR, right? Swing, swing. I have that set up, I have that, plugged in via USB to a separate laptop. So I have a separate MacBook that has my streaming software. I use Ecamm Live. But this will work with OBS, with StreamYard, any streaming service you use, it'll work, right? Essentially, you plug the mixer in, you turn it on, then within the streaming software, when you go to audio, instead of just using a microphone or your computer mic or whatever, you switch it to the codec. The codec refers to the sound card in your external mixer, and bam, you have direct audio from your mixer. Direct, as crystal clear as it could possibly sound. And just like with your mobile DJ setup, you can plug anything into the external mixer. So if you happen to play piano or you want to add another instrument, or you want to get really creative, you want to add multiple microphones and do a karaoke thing live, whatever you want to do, you have the freedom of doing it through the mixer. The mixer is hooked up through your computer through USB and then bam, you got 10 channels to use and it sounds fantastic. So now that I explained all the reasons why every single mobile DJ should be using an external mixer, I'll talk about why I use the one I use. Number one, I love RCF. I love their speakers. I love their products and running RCF speakers through an RCF mixer just makes sense, right? And it really does sound great. I think that obviously it's tuned really well for RCF speakers and they're made to work together. So that's something right off the bat, like obviously I would want to stick with the same brand. Number two, it's a rotary mixer, right? It has rotary knobs. I'm not a fan of the knobs that go up and down for an external mixer. You want to know why? You ever slip on one of those knobs? You ever slip and go whoop all the way up? And, and you kill somebody, grandma just drops. <laughs> she just happened to be walking across the dance floor and poof, there went grandma, she gone. <laughs> right? There's no mess ups with a rotary, right? You actually literally have to turn it. So it saves all those problems. Another thing I love about my RCF mixer is it has these dedicated green aux knobs, which it gives me a ton of control. Like I mentioned earlier, if I want to take the microphone out of my booth so I don't hear my mic through the booth or through a third speaker I ran to another room, or let's say the videographer only wants microphones to go through, or just wants music, or only wants one particular mic, I can give them individual signals because I can set each channel whether or not it's gonna go through the aux which the videographer is running out of. So it gives me more control for what I give the videographer. It just, it, you can literally customize each one where it goes. Another thing it has is a pan knob for each channel. So I can pan right or left. Super useful, let's say like you're stuck setting up in front of a table, maybe your right speaker is right in front of a table, but the left speaker's all clear, I can pan my sound more to the left so I don't kill the table to the right, 
but I don't sacrifice volume. And as I mentioned earlier, my mixer has dedicated high pass filter buttons for each channel, which really cuts down on feedback. And also for channels one and two, where I run my mics one and two, it has a compression knob, which really helps for when I get too loud, you know, like when I'm on the mic, when I'm like, the new bread and grill, like, you know what I mean? When you do that thing on the mic, right? That compression, when you adjust that compression right, it brings it down so it's more level. You don't peak, you don't sound like shit. It prevents you from basically peaking on the channel. And of course, with the built-in sound card it's literally plug and play with any streaming service I've ever used I've tried it with OBS I tried it with Ecamm Live which I use most often and I also tried it with StreamYard recently just last week and it works perfect plug and play direct sound anytime I stream live so it makes my live streams super super professional sounding and I don't know about you but as a DJ I'm all about sound when I live stream I want to sound crystal clear as close to as if you're standing in the room with me as possible I want you to hear every little thing I'm doing without hesitation the only downfall of this is if you're streaming on Facebook you're gonna get pulled a lot quicker a lot quicker they're gonna recognize you real quick so just do yourself a favor, stream on Twitch, stream on Mixcloud. <laughs> And by the way, if you're interested in the external mixer I use, I put a bunch of links below. Pick out your favorite website and buy it from them, support them. I basically Googled and tried to find it at every website possible, so whoever sells them and you know for the right price or whatever, I put it all below for you. So pick out your favorite website, check them out there, support them, help them out. And seriously, thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, hit the like button, help out my algorithms. If you didn't like this video, you hate my face, whatever, hit the dislike button, that's cool too. Leave a comment let me know what you think let me know if you have your own opinion on this matter i'd love to hear from you i'll get right back to you and i'll see you guys next video peace